still alive. A baby. Time to go. Okay, Samus. Everything's normal. I awoke to the familiar voice of a quarantine officer. Let's try sitting up, huh? Slowly now. A dream. I had been reliving the tragic moments of my recent past. Thanks to the hyperbeam, which was given to me somehow by the baby, I laid Mother Brain to waste. And the explosion that followed destroyed Planet Zebus along with the remains of Mother Brain, the Space Pirates, and my long-standing nemesis, Ridley, and the baby. Come on, Samus. Let's go next door. I wondered if this too was a result of the power the baby gave me. Right, you're doing the meeting room. The big dogs are waiting. I gave your suit a polish so you'd be at least somewhat presentable. Not even a fragment. None of the baby remained on me. I knew it to be true, but still couldn't help looking at my palm for a sign. Never again would I encounter the baby. Never. The finality of it struck me once again. Mission completed. The planet Zebes was annihilated and all Metroids were exterminated. A simple report, almost dull even, but it felt momentous to me. I don't know how much time passed since then. Days went by in their quiet way, and 
people's recollections of Metroids and space pirates grew nebulous over time, relegated to a past concern of the galactic communities. Nothing more than a faded memory. Codename Baby's Cry. A common SOS with the urgency of a baby crying. The nickname comes from the fact that the purpose of the signal is to draw attention. The signal was coming from a remote part of space. I altered the course of my ship as if this detour had already been part of my flight plan. Baby's cry. It was as though it was crying specifically for me. Remember me? Anthony. There's only one person who calls me Princess. And that person is Anthony Higgs of the Galactic Federation Army. Haven't seen you since that last mission. Hey, and your buddy's here too. Adam Malkovich. A general in the Galactic Federation Army. Not only a trusted confidant, but also my former superior officer. Yes, there was a time when I was enrolled in the Galactic Federation Army. And then I... Well, I was young and inexperienced. As the result of a certain incident, I left Adam's command and set out on my path as a solitary bounty hunter. you doing here? The first words out of his mouth were typical coming from Adam. To answer his question, I recounted the details of what had brought me to this place, and then I asked what circumstances led the Federation here. That information is not for an outsider. The word he so obviously chose, outsider, pierced my heart.
Commander, we're all prepped. Our only option is to use the laser to slowly burn our way through. This is gonna take a while. The electrical system here is out, and we can't get the barrier wall to open. We tried using explosives, but it's tricky to pull off without collateral damage. What we need is some way to focus the power onto one centralized location. Adam hadn't authorized it, but I decided to remain on site for the sake of the others. Something attacked him. Get away from me! Smile! Enough! It was obvious that there was some pervasive danger throughout the facility. I didn't know what had brought Adam here. But I did know that cooperation was imperative if we were to restore safety. Adam, listen to me. Clearly this facility is in complete disorder. It might be too dangerous for your men to go alone. That's why I've... Look at that! They're coming out of the wall! All right, stay calm. Samus, looks like I'm gonna need to ask for your cooperation on this mission, but I'm also gonna have to ask that you follow my commands. You don't move unless I say so, and you don't fire until I say so. Any objections, lady? The thumbs up sign had been used by the Galactic Federation for ages. Me? I was known for giving the thumbs down during briefing. 
I had my reasons, though. Commander Adam Malkovich was normally cool and not one to joke around. But, priority one but he would end all of his mission briefings by saying, bring them to safety. Any objections, lady? He was joking, but others weren't. At the time, I felt surrounded by people who treated me like a child, or used kid gloves because I was a woman. And yet with Adam, I was grateful for the nod. My past has left me with an uneasy soul, and as a result, it touched me on some level that Adam would acknowledge that past by calling me something delicate, like Lady. And I knew more than anyone that every word from Adam was deliberate. My thumbs down was a twofold response. A sign of derision at being called a lady, and a signal of my complete understanding of the mission orders. The other soldiers were always willing to support me with easy smiles despite the fact that I clearly had so much yet to learn. Among them was Anthony. In the face of his well-meaning behavior and that of the other soldiers, my response was to become increasingly bitter. I was a child, always with something to prove, a chip on my shoulder. And I was angry. I felt that if I let my guard down, I would easily be broken. And beyond that, I was scared. But even in the naivete of my youth, I could see in Adam's joking manner how close he felt to me. Adam knows my past, and he knows me better than anyone else. confession time. Because I was so young when I lost both of my parents, there's no question I saw Adam as a father figure. When I rebelled against him, I knew I could get away with it. And his paternal compassion in the face of my rebellion reinforced the special bond I felt with him. I understood well that chances were slim that I would ever find anyone that understood me like Adam. And yet, when the time came, I still left his side. I was so young. Young and naive. Exactly what transpired here on the battleship is still uncertain. Here's what we do know. The equipment we thought had been destroyed is operational again. And we've seen casualties attributed to an unidentified and lethal creature. The situation is critical. We need to gather all the information we can, but priority one is to find any survivors and bring them to safety. Consider this site extremely dangerous. Be careful as you make your sweeps. And there's one problem. The wireless interference in this facility is all pervasive. Your comm systems are useless. As a result, communication channels will be limited to the facility's navigation booths. Well then, Lyle, investigate Sector 1 and show a little restraint with the explosives. Gotcha. Maurice, you cover Sector 2. Repair any equipment you come across. Affirmative. Anthony, you're Sector 3. I'll leave it to you to decide whether plasma guns are called for. All right! James, check out the control bridge. Our communication issues might be the result of electrical interference. Yes, sir! And KG, run a complete sweep of the residential quarters and investigate any trace of survivors. Got it! Each of you is authorized to use a freeze gun. Do not forget to check in regularly via navigation booths. And Samus, you go to the system management room. Do everything you can to get the electrical system back up and running. Looks like your comm system is still functional. Remember, everything you see will also appear on this screen. Regarding auxiliary weapons, the use of bombs has been authorized. As far as your other weapons go, we will continue to investigate and authorize use as we can. However, we currently have no plans to authorize the use of power bombs. 
As you know, they have the ability to spread a high temperature heat wave over a large area, impacting living things. Which is a nice way of saying they can vaporize humans instantly. You should be well aware of how dangerous power bombs are, and how their devastation can't be obstructed with common materials. Once the mission in the system management room is complete, I need you to report back. I'll give you your next orders then. I want you all to be especially careful as you execute your missions. That's the end of the briefing. It was the first joint mission I'd been a part of since becoming a freelance bounty hunter. And of course, it was the first time since my Federation days that I was following the orders of a commanding officer. Having received mission orders from Adam, I felt confused and strangely exhilarated at the unexpected turn of events. I responded. Understood, Adam. No objections, of course. Samus, go through the hatch on your right and head towards Sector 1. Lyle went ahead to secure a route to a facility of interest. I'll leave you to survey Sector 1. The large, cage-like booth looked like something had been raised in it. And in one corner was the miserable form of a researcher's corpse. This victim hadn't sustained the same injuries. The dead I'd seen had been torn apart by something large. This one had been attacked by a different type of creature. And as I studied the violence this creature had wrought, I felt something in the air, the presence of a dark intelligence. Samus, proceed through the hatch I just unlocked. Your next destination is a little further ahead. Thank you. 
Some creatures use the powers of others to capture their prey. Watching this disgusting beast, I felt as though it was feeding off my power as well. At the same time, a thought crossed my mind. That howl I heard earlier. Could this creature have been the source? Samus, head to the biosphere test area in your current sector. There should be some important information about this facility in that exam center. The other members are en route. Quickly, go meet them there. Hey, Samus. Hi. Where's Lyle? Looks like he's late. Huh? Hey. The CPU seems to have self-destructed. The central system is broken into parts, but I think I might be able to restore it and recover some of the data. Let's try it. Like the CO said, there might be some pretty crucial information hidden here. Well, while Maurice here is working his magic, the rest of us should search this building. Am I right? Got, Got it. it. Hey, Princess. Does this view bring back any memories? Yeah. Looks like the training grounds of the Galactic Federation. Adam, are you seeing this? It is a Bezian. But it's been cybernetically enhanced. What is this thing? I don't know. Continue your investigation. Everyone, gather round! All right. So I managed to recover one piece of data. This bottleship is under management of the Galactic Federation. In these facilities, life forms from each planet have been raised and researched as possible bioweapons. Site manager and development director, Dr. Madeline Bergman. Adam, was the Galactic Federation experimenting with bioweapons? Looks like it. Use of bioweapons is strictly prohibited. Of course it is. What's happened here is illegal. 
Who is Madeline Bergman? <sighs> Must be the person in charge here. Is that all you got? I didn't need to press Adam about it any further. I knew his mind. Not only was he a strong opponent of bioweapons, he was against the use of living things for unnecessary reasons, period. Life, no matter what form it takes as it's born into this often cruel universe, should not be tampered with. That was Adam's philosophy. In bringing the infant Metroid back, I did something that I know would have gone against his convictions. And, though I might have been left alone, it was a clear and blatant violation of protocol. I wondered what Adam thought of me. Out of nowhere, I suddenly found myself concerned with his opinion again. I've almost gotten it completely restored. But, I'll bet they protected this thing with a seriously sophisticated security system. If I can't get past it, James, that'll be where you come in. Leave it to me. Shouldn't be a problem to hack into this thing. I mean, it might tell us what exactly was going on here. Looks like this might take some time now. Madeline might still be somewhere in this building. Keep scouting for more intel. Let's go! Okay, princess. I wanted to give you some cover earlier, but this thing takes forever to charge. I'll save the next shot for you. Not that you'll need it. Hey, come over here. What's up? Lyle's down. He looks like a pile of rags. What's gotta happen to a guy to make him look like that?
An empty shell. Looks like that monster from earlier infiltrated Sector 3. Samus, follow it. It was clear that the Galactic Federation was developing bioweapons on the bottle ship. I wonder if Adam came here knowing that. Regardless, I knew I had to talk to the person in charge, Madeline Bergman. Of course, she would have to be alive in order for me to do that. searching areas you can access with your current equipment. We'll determine weapon and equipment authorization after we get a better understanding of the situation. Samus, activate the Varia feature on your suit to protect yourself from heat damage. The creature's corpse showed signs of what looked like Metroid predation, making my mind race. Metroids? Here? Impossible. Metroids can't tolerate cold temperatures. They couldn't survive in this environment. Besides, they're extinct. The baby was the last of its kind. No, you don't understand. I'm here to rescue you. You're lying! 
I know the Galactic Federation wants to silence everyone who knows about our work here. How can I trust you when your troops are willing to kill each other? Stay away from me. Listen to me. We're here to rescue you. The woman believed that the Galactic Federation was sent to the bottle ship to keep those in the know from leaking information about the project. And no wonder. She'd been attacked by someone wearing a Galactic Federation power suit, and she implied that Maurice was killed by another soldier. Considering the mortal danger we'd survived together, I had to agree with her. There was a traitor among us. Samus. The wavelength of that monster's cry is driving the other creatures into a frenzy. They've grown markedly more aggressive. It appears to be hiding in Sector 3 now. Take the elevator ahead of you to the main sector. From there, head to Sector 3. If you run into that thing, hit it with your plasma beam. You've got to take it down. With those creatures, Crafted into killers, running free, the bottle ship had been turned into a nightmare replica of Zebus. And then here came Adam and the others. At this rate, the plan the Federation wanted to keep so secret would be revealed. So they sent in an assassin. Someone to wipe out any survivors as well as anyone who learned about the secret project. KG, James, Anthony, and Adam. Could one of them really be a traitor? Until I found out who it was, I decided to call the traitor the Deleter. On top of everything, I started to think about that woman. Was she the one who sent the distress signal? And could she be the person in charge here, Madeline Bergman? Either way, I knew I had to protect her. She would be targeted again. And she wasn't the only one in danger. I, too, would be considered a threat here.
Samus, use of the grapple beam is authorized. Get to Anthony and cover it. That was ugly. Thanks, Princess. So, you get called out here too? Called? Commander gave us a new directive to move as a unit. Our gather point was a navigation booth near here, but when no one showed, I figured I'd just take a look around. That's when I got jumped by those things you just saw. What was your unit directive? I'm tracking that monster. We were heading to the geothermal power plant to open the magma eruption port. Gotta restore the power in this place, so I can see that pretty face of yours. Yeah, it seemed a little excessive to send the whole unit to do it, but he's the commander. He must have had a reason. <laughs> so, Samus. How you feeling about the commander, huh? has arrived at the drive unit. Ian, be careful out there. I know this is a routine fix, but don't let your guard down. There are 300 people on board. Their lives are in your hands. Roger that. Commander! The drive unit's going critical! The unit is overheating beyond our estimates, sir. Ian! Commander Malkovich, unit meltdown imminent! It's gonna explode! Prepare to disengage the drive unit immediately. But Ian's still inside! Adam, I can reach him! Give me the order, please! Lock and secure the shielding doors now! Adam, wait! There's still time! I can make it! Please, let me go! I mean... That's Ian! That's your little brother out there! We're out of time, sir! Adam, please, let me go. You have to trust me. Just give me a chance! Commence drive unit disposal immediately. That's an order. Adam was right. If we had waited any longer, it would have meant the end of those we had come to rescue, and the end of us as well. I knew that, but... At the very least, you wouldn't be standing here now. That's what the commander was most scared of. I was childish. No one should have to make the choice that Adam did, and yet all I could do was question his authority and make things more difficult. Hey, you were just a pup then, and the commander knows it. Look, forget it. Sorry for hitting a nerve. We better get going anyhow. Something like that happened now? Huh. Best just forget about it. I'm out. I knew the question Anthony was suppressing. And I knew the answer. If something like that happened again, I would hold fast to that glimmer of hope and try for redemption. That's who I am.
out the way! Man! This is your thing in here! We gotta clear out! Where's the exit at? Thank good. Well, only one thing to do, huh? Let's tear this thing up. Wait, Anthony. Leave this one to me. Don't waste your plasma. Samus, blast the eruption port to get the magma flowing. Use your super missiles.
I wondered if Anthony was conscious as he hit bottom. Unbearable thoughts welled up in me, making me want to get as far away as I could. I regretted not being able to protect him. And I regretted thinking, even for a moment, that he would betray me. Or fail to come to my aid at the expense of his own safety. Something was gnawing at me. Communication with Adam had ceased. From the deleter's point of view, Adam would represent the largest threat. Without question, his life had to be in danger. But it was Adam Malkovich. He wouldn't go down easily. And Adam would already know about the deleter. So there's no way he would let his guard down. If that was the case, then... Why couldn't I reach him? What did he think of the unfolding situation? And what was he planning to do next? My racing thoughts started to frustrate me. Adam? I'm not a member of the Galactic Federation. I came here because I intercepted the distress call. I'm a bounty hunter. And I know that something is after you. Please, you must believe me. Thank you. I'm Samus Aaron. What's your name? Madeline Bergman. Behind closed doors, the Galactic Federation was trying to create a special forces unit composed of bioweapons. In order to make it happen, they were attempting to create an organization modeled after the Space Pirates, with the Zabesians at the center. 
But because of a certain presence, the life forms became ferocious. We were no longer able to control them. By a certain presence, she must have meant Ridley. So you sent out the distress signal, even though it endangered your life? I had to. I felt there was a real danger here, that if left as is, the Zabesians would continue to evolve and resurrect as real space pirates. If that danger was real, then the risk of withholding information to protect herself was too great, clearly. And yet, wasn't she the one who set the facility's system to self-destruct? In silence, I praised her courage and sense of responsibility. At the same time, her argument had some holes. Say that the Zabesians, under Ridley's influence, became super aggressive. Would that really lead to the resurrection of the space pirates? Without a malicious force to lead them down that path, wouldn't they continue to merely follow their instincts, ultimately becoming no more than a swarm of feral creatures? Regardless, it was clear that the Galactic Federation was ready to consign their enormous mistake to oblivion. And that's why they sent a deleter. And as for Madeline and others who knew the secret? But wait, there was another inconsistency in her story. Why go to such lengths at all? With just a small flexing of the Galactic Federation's military force, they should have been able to destroy a facility of this scope with ease. So why didn't they? Actually... There was an even more dangerous plan. Come with me. What? That's not possible. The Metroids were terminated along with Zebis. Yes. And the last of them, the baby, met its end above my head. You're Samus Aran, right? The one who annihilated the space pirates? Metroid remnants were attached to your suit when you returned from Zebis. They were reproduced from a piece of cell structure salvaged by the Federation, and they are in this facility. I gave your suit a polish so you'd be at least somewhat presentable. And Ridley in the same way. At first, no one thought that the creature was Ridley. They didn't think it had potential as a bioweapon at all. They raised it like a pet, calling it Little Birdie. Until one day, it attacked one of the researchers and got away. Ridley had played dead and lured the scientist into his cage. What was left? It was a horrible sight. But in order to control Metroids, you need Mother Brain's telepathy. You don't. You didn't recreate a Mother Brain clone, did you? It's artificial intelligence. We developed an AI program that would reproduce Mother Brain's thought processes. We called it MB. But it was just a program. It wasn't the Mother herself. And be evolved as it communicated with the Metroids. It appears as though it began to become self-aware, much like the original Mother Brain. It's really quite remarkable. That's when it became clear to me just why Madeline was so afraid of the Space Pirate's resurrection. It wasn't that her story had holes in it. Through the holes were glimpses of the danger that was right before her eyes. If everything she said was true... Where are the Metroids and MB? 
They're in an area called Sector Zero. It's a unit that doesn't appear in any of our map data. It's a place like Torian, where we propagate and raise Metroids. I began to see what the worst case scenario would look like. The ultimate weapon, the Metroid, would be mass produced. And as soon as an AI that could control them was developed, the plan to create a special forces unit modeled after the space pirates was replaced. But as the AI called MB spun out of control, the facility became a place much like the planet Zebus. If the situation were left alone, galactic society would be put in peril. Even the ringleaders of the operation wanted to avoid that, but they still wanted the Metroids. And that's why... They decided to capture the Metroids contained in Sector Zero and delete the rest of the facility, including the Space Pirates, Ridley, and everyone who knew the secret. But before the ringleaders could act, Adam appeared. Adam might have known or suspected the truth about the facility from the beginning. Regardless, since the ringleaders were members of the Galactic Federation, they could no longer act recklessly. And so a deleter was installed as a member of Adam's team to destroy evidence and plan each subsequent move. But having me added on as a member must have disrupted the Galactic Federation's plans. Madeline, thanks for telling me all this. I've got to destroy the Metroids and MB in Sector Zero. You have to remain hidden. Don't worry. The Galactic Federation CO who's here now will help you. You're safe. Does that CO happen to be... Commander Adam Malkovich? The real leader of this operation is Commander Malkovich. I can't believe that he's here. Stay here until I return.
baby. Samus, can you hear my voice? I read you loud and clear, Adam. You know what lies up ahead. The Metroids and the artificial intelligence that controls them. The fruit of the Galactic Federation's twisted project. Yes. So why did you shoot me? You can't destroy these Metroids. What do you mean? Sector Zero Metroids most likely can't be frozen. What are you talking about? There's a strong likelihood that the Metroid's mortal weakness, the vulnerability to cold, has been overcome through genetic manipulation. And if that's true, there's no way you can destroy them. But that baby earlier, the infant Metroid, you were able to freeze it. True. My guess is that it was because it was still in a larval stage. Who can say? One thing's for certain. They're definitely propagating Metroids. Developing bioweapons with an obvious and fatal flaw would be suicide. It's hard to imagine the military mass producing defective weapons. Then again, none of this makes sense. Metroids are lethal. Their extinction was a wise decision. And now, since no one has the technology to defeat them, they cannot be allowed to exist. Hang on, Adam. First, I need to know why you're credited as the creator of the Metroid Military Program Report. I received the request to write the report from Galactic Federation Headquarters. In that report, I outlined the potential dangers of such a program, and explained categorically why it shouldn't be attempted. HQ listened, but a small group within the Federation co-opted my report for its own purposes. Samus, you'll be fully recovered soon. I have several missions for you. 
This facility appears to be on an intercept course with Galactic Federation HQ. If what Madeline Bergman said is correct, there's a distinct possibility that this is the start of an attack by MB against the Federation. One way or another, some sort of attack is clearly imminent. You have to find a way to divert the ship off its intercept course. I've located a survivor in room MW, toward the rear of the Bioweapon Research Center. Whoever it is will be a key witness. Secure the survivor's safety. And defeat Ridley. He's as much of a threat as the Metroids. And one last word of warning. Madeline Bergman is no ally. Hold on, Adam. What are you planning to do with the Metroids here in Sector Zero? Leave it to me. I'll deal with this place. You have a plan for dealing with Metroids that can't be frozen? Sector Zero has a self-destruct protocol. If the Sector receives a significant amount of damage, the unit is programmed to detach and self-destruct. A powerful explosion will eliminate the Metroids and MB without leaving a trace. Don't you dare, Adam. Let me go in. I'm the only one who has a shot against the Metroids. We have to take the chance. Please, Adam. You have to trust me. You have to trust me. Just give me a chance. Samus. I wish I could battle Ridley, but I can't. Unlike you, I'm no galactic savior. I'm merely human. But I can save you. You should be completely healed soon. There isn't much time. We both need to get started on our missions. I'm sorry for getting a little rough with you. Good luck, Samus. Objections. Right, lady? Adam vanished, my best friend, the person who understood me best, the closest thing to a father I had. Thoughts swirled through my head. I couldn't come to grips with what had happened. Such a cruel way to say goodbye. 
I was the only one who witnessed Adam's last moment, and though it shook me, I was calmer than I usually am. I think Adam granted me that eye of the storm clarity, his final gift to me. There was no time for me to grieve his death, but there was time for me to say, Adam, thank you. Leave the rest to me.
Ridley. What could have happened? Stay away! Stay away! You have to calm down!
closer! Stay away from me! Easy. I won't come any closer until you say so. My name is Samus. I'm an independent bounty hunter. I know the situation here and I know how you must feel. I'm here to secure your safety. May I come closer? What's your role at this facility? I'm responsible for all operations. My name is Madeline Bergman. Wait a minute. I met another woman who called herself Madeline Bergman. What's going on here? What you met was M.B. She's an android. She was created with the intellectual data of Mother Brain, and consequently developed Mother Brain's consciousness as well. What? The Federation's foolish plan. Mother Brain's rampage. Everything that happened here was just as Madeline, or rather M.B., had told me. The person who sabotaged the system to stop MB's rampage and sent out the distress call had to be the person standing before me. It had to be Madeline Bergman. MB was the artificial intelligence originally developed to regenerate and control Space Pirate Special Forces. Because we wanted it to control these Special Forces through telepathy, we were forced to model its infrastructure after Mother Brain. At that time, MB didn't have a human form. Before long, we started to see the viability of creating Metroid clones. Once we did, MB started to take on her current shape. But why? Because we needed the first Metroid hatchling to recognize MB as its mother, she had to take on the form of a living thing. With that as our theoretical basis, we were able to create the ideal relationship with the Metroid. One that wasn't based on dominance or control. I remember the baby hatching before my eyes. When it attacked Mother Brain in order to save me, that was the result of the kind of ideal relationship they were trying to develop with MB. They found the perfect means of control and started propagating Metroids in Sector Zero. At the same time, they were conducting genetic manipulation experiments to create unfreezable Metroids. Apparently, the queen I met earlier was the first of these propagated Metroids to mature. They wanted to preserve her as a control specimen, so they had left her genes unaltered. The fact that she'd grow into a queen was something not even Madeline and her team could have predicted. Only special infants had the genetic coding to become queens. Once our MB was in a human form, she excelled. As an interface between us and them, her skills with personal interaction humanized her to a great extent. If my theory is correct, this is going Fast. to be a groundbreaking multi-system for artificial intelligence. Her confidence was unwavering, and her ability to learn was greater than we'd expected. But then... She developed emotions. Then a nascent sense of herself. She began asserting her own thoughts, and her opinions began to contradict ours. It's quite typical for artificial intelligence to evolve as a result of self-analysis. However, there's no precedent for an AI like MB developing emotions. It's possible that her interactions with the Metroids brought it about, but we don't know for sure. The newly hatched infant took to her like his mother. And perhaps at that moment, MB began to develop a soul. 
It was all conjecture, but the idea wouldn't leave my mind. And that was when we decided to alter her AI program. A human-like existence, but one without feelings. To make Enby less than human, the researchers had to deny her that consciousness. I knew this, but in my heart, I felt sympathy for Enby. On the day we were going to alter MB's program. Right before my eyes. Come on, come on. No! I watched her being restrained. Stop! What are you doing to her? These orders are from above. Take her away. Wait. She reached out to me and asked Calm me down. for help. No! But there was nothing I could do. Presence that day caused a disturbing reaction in her. She was fixated on me. Madeline had taken to calling NB Melissa. She took the initials MB and told the AI they stood for oh, Melissa, Melissa Bergman. It looks great on you. MB liked that name. It made it sound like Madeline was calling her her daughter. Once she felt abandoned and hunted by that same Madeline, MB telepathically commanded the special forces to revolt. The facility fell into complete chaos. and suffered widespread damage. <laughs> MB was trying to get revenge on the Federation Army, and on us. It's possible all humans have become the target of her hatred. With the space pirates under her control, she was able to propagate the Metroids in Sector Zero, even creating a Queen Metroid. She was well armed and planning her attack on the Galactic Federation. But Adam and I crushed her plan completely. And now, who could guess where she was and what she planned next? She's backed into a corner. And her hatred is entirely focused on you and me right now. <gasps> MB! Wait! MB, calm down. Please listen! Madeline, step back! You... I mean, we were wrong. It's all over. Madeline! I was not wrong. The humans were foolish, and I was forced to bring judgment on them. And yet, because of you, I failed. You must understand the weight of your crime. You must pay the price for what you've done. Please, MB. We have to get past this. No. You will all be judged. It's okay now. I won't ever fail you again. I promise. I'm so sorry. Melissa. Oh, Melissa, it looks great on you. That's your name. Go! Go! 
Samasarin, I heard what happened. You performed admirably. You can leave the rest to us. Madeline! Wait! Aaron. Unfortunate what happened to Commander Malkovich. And to think that his entire unit was annihilated. Truly a tragic day. Would you agree, Aaron? Sadly, with them gone, you're just an outsider. And given your unofficial status, I cannot allow you contact with the witness. With your predilection for transporting illegal cargo like infant Metroids, I must ask that you restrict your... <laughs> Time for the lady to go home. Someone escort her. Yes, sir. Time for us to go. Come on, princess. What? 
Stop right there. Who are you? Anthony Hicks, sir. Galactic Federation Platoon 7. I need to secure the safety of any survivors, Commander Malkovich's orders, and the purpose of this mission. What? Authorized by the Chairman of the Galactic Federation. Of course. What do you mean, the Chairman? Oh, man, you guys made it here quick. I mean, if I hadn't stopped the engines, we might have missed each other. Crazy how something good can come out of something bad. Whoa, didn't mean to wake her. Guess I ought to be quiet. Anthony was trying to be courteous to Madeline. She was exhausted and had only just fallen asleep. She needed the rest. She had a lot of explaining to do once she got to Galactic Federation Headquarters. For herself. And for Melissa. Still can't get my head around it. What a crazy mission. <sighs> Anthony sighed as he muttered to himself. What would have happened if we hadn't been called there? Might the furious MB have attacked the Galactic Federation and brought about its utter destruction? Melissa wasn't insane, no. One day, a consciousness simply bloomed within her. And those that caused it to bloom, the humans, called it insanity. I was the insane one. That was what Madeline muttered softly as she sank into sleep. The selfish conceits of humans drove envy to violence. It was their distorted perceptions and greed that awoke such fury in the fledgling girl's heart. Her thought was to punish the foolish and conceited. But MB could not complete her mission. As Melissa, she was defeated. With their one vulnerability overcome, the Metroids were indestructible. If some fool just following orders had taken the savage creatures to those who sought them, I can't imagine what would have happened if Adam hadn't recognized the looming danger. The cost was far too great. Why did Adam have to pay with his life? For me, I couldn't believe he was dead. For the first time, I questioned his choice. Objections, right lady? I heard Adam's voice in my head. And I knew in my heart that he had made the right decision. Just as he had so many years ago. In that moment, I swore not to grieve his death. And for the first time, I gave him a thumbs up, just in case he was watching over me. His amused expression looked as though he wanted to say something. His face and Adam swirled together that last smile as Adam drifted away.
the decision was made to destroy the bottle ship. A mission that will most likely be carried out in the next day or two. I'm heading toward the bottle ship now. I'm going to rescue something that was left there. Something that can't be replaced. telling me all this. I've got to destroy the Metroids and MB in Sector Zero. You have to remain hidden. No! Samus! Don't worry. The Galactic Federation CEO, who's here now, will help you. Self-destruction protocol activated. Please evacuate the facility immediately. Five minutes until detonation. Please evacuate the facility immediately.
keep me waiting, Adam.